But everyone return to their Jupyter Hub uh, homepage here and open the Carto Pi Projections IPython notebook, please. Okay, so um, I would like to give you full disclosure prior to, dem prior to demonstrating some of these things to you, and that is, especially since we have an expert in the room, that I am not an expert in cartographic projections. That's not to say that I don't use them and value them because they're very important. But later on today, we're gonna have Sarah telling us about some of the complications and uh, benefits of choosing your map projections. And if you have questions about them, I don't have the answers to them. So I wanted to just start with that. Um, but what I do want to show you is that in Python, there's a really fantastic library called CartoPy, which handles the complex trigonometric calculations required to perform cartographic projections, okay? And so that's the real, and, and it makes it like stupid simple, which is what we want, right? We don't want to make it complicated because they're complicated and somebody else has figured out how to make them easier, so we're going to use that tool. What is a cartographic projection? Does anybody have a quick answer to that question? Yeah. Anybody? Nobody. Yeah, Sarah? <laughs> you want to yell out your answer? Sure, sure. It's the mathematical transformation of the spherical coordinate system into a planar coordinate system. Yes. Is the Earth flat? Indeed. Is the Earth flat? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, the Earth is not flat. The Earth is a sphere. Just kidding. It's an ellipse. Just kidding. It's not really that either. So. <laughs> Moving from the spherical world into a map on our computer screens is something that is important to be able to do well, but there's no way to do it well. There's just a way to do it appropriately to your, uh, to your particular context. And so that's all I'm going to say about map projections in terms of their usability and which ones to pick. Now I'm going to show you how to actually employ this uh, Python library called CartoPy to engage with map projections in your plotting. Okay? Um, there's about a thousand too many words in this IPython notebook for me to read to you, so I'm not going to read them to you. What I did is I put the words in there so you can go back and read them on your own. But what we're really going to do here is we're going to focus on um, on the actual code. So you can ignore all the words right now because I'm basically telling you what you need to know. But if you need to go back and review, the words are going to be there for you. So if you could always uh, all go down to cell four in your notebook, we're going to start there. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're importing matplotlib and the pyplot the pi uh, submodule there, which is just basically all the plotting utilities that come with, uh, with matplotlib. And we're also going to import cartopy. Now, cartopy is built up of a lot of different submodules, all of which um, have a different, very specific purpose. And the one for our particular purpose here is CRS. Does anyone know what that stands for? Not Sarah. Coordinate reference system, yes. A coordinate reference system is basically you can think of as the projection. It defines the relationship between the spherical coordinates and the projected coordinates. And we're going to import that as CCRS. This is a Python idiom where you can import something as something else. It just, it just basically calls it a different name so we can access it later. We're also going to import the from the I.O. module, we're going to import the shape reader module. And this is going to allow us to use a very useful part of CartoPy, which allows us to add base maps, coastlines, borders, other polygons to our map as a reference for the data that we're plotting. Okay, so that's where we're going to add shape reader. And then I've just defined a variable here which contains our default projection, which is the web mercator projection. This is the projection you see when you go to Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever your favorite online map projection is. This is the one they all use. And then we're telling matplotlib to plot our plots in line in the notebook. Can everyone go and uncomment this line that says says per, uh, percent sign config. Sorry, can you comment it? Put a hash sign or a hashtag in front of it, please. If you want to go home and make really beautiful high resolution plots, you should do that, but they take really long time to render, so we're not going to do that in this tutorial. If you could comment that line, please. Put a hashtag in front of it. Okay, and then you can run the cell. Shift, enter, nothing happens. It's great. We're going to go down to cell 5 here, and you're going to see that I've defined this variable called shape name. What we're doing here is I'm going to show you how to add base maps, coastlines, borders, to your plot so that you can plot your data on top of it. Has anyone heard of natural earth before? Raise your hands. Some of you. What is natural earth? I want to yell it out. Natural Earth is a database of free vector files, which define a lot of useful things that, are, that lie on the surface of the planet, like borders, coastlines, rivers, lakes, uh, oceans, that sort of thing. And it's all freely available and easy to download and 
Cardo Pi in the Shape Reader module has nicely built for you a function that, given some parameters, will go to Natural Earth and download the data that you're asking for without having to deal with it. That's great. So we want that. And in order to tell it what we want to download, we just give the name of the Natural Earth data set that we're looking for. This is irrelevant to you right now. You can go look these up. They're all on their website. This is the administrative level one file, which contains states, provinces, and lakes. Okay. We're going to download it as, at a resolution of 50 meters. It goes all the way down to 10, but those files get large, and for all of you to download it at once would be unpleasant. And we're going to download the cultural version, not an interesting thing to talk about here. And we're going to give the shape name there. When I download that, it's going to say, wow, OK, this is the file that you're looking for. I've downloaded it. There's where it lives. All right. Every, you're all going to have a different sh uh, string there because it's living on your version of uh, this particular, of your Jupyter Hub. In order to access that information, we're going to start doing some actual plotting commands. So this is where your familiarity with matplotlib will be challenged. OK, so if you're not familiar with what these commands do, Randy used them, or we're going to use them again. We're going to start with a figure. We're asking matplotlib to give us a figure, and it's going to be 15 by 15, a square. And here's where matplot, here's where CardoPy comes in, all right? When you define an axis on your figure, you tell CardoPy what projection your axes are going to be plotted on. Okay, so you're going to define the projection of the map that you're going to build by giving the projection keyword to the axes function of matplotlib. Who doesn't understand that? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Wow, you all understand it. One person doesn't. Good. Okay, honesty is the best policy. Um, we're going to go through this again later. So if you don't understand it now, it's going to come up again. Basically, the way this works is that when you define a set of axes on a matplotlib figure, CardoPy wants to know what sort of projection you want your plot to be in. That's as, it's as simple and as complicated as that. Okay. So we're going to define our axes here. We're going to set their extent. What format are these numbers in? Call it out. Latitude, latitude and longitude, right? What coordinate reference system is that? Mm. 4326. What does that mean? Yeah, so it's in reference to a geodetic datum. A geodetic datum is a description of the, the shape of the planet. The default in Cardo Pi when you use the CRS.geodetic uh, coordinate reference system is the WGS84 datum. You can specify that if you want to use another one. We're going to use that as our default datum. And when we set the extent, you'll notice that we have to give the projection in which our extent coordinates are being given. So not only do we give the coordinates as a list, but we also give ccrs.geodetic, which says my coordinates that I'm giving you are in the geodetic coordinate reference system. Just so you know, CardoPy, thanks for taking note of that. And we're going to set the title of our plot. And then this is where it gets interesting. So for every state in our shape file, which is being read by this shape reader module, dot geometries just gets the actual geometries of them all. We're going to add each of those geometries to the plottable axis. Okay, so we're going to say there's an axis object for every state in our state's shape file. We're going to add each of those geometries to our uh, to our map. Okay, you can add all sorts of different interesting options to the add geometries function, but one of them is not an option. This is the coordinate reference system in which the shape file was downloaded. It's the plate car coordinate reference system. It's just latitude and longitude. You can just think about it like that. If Sarah has additional information on that, we can get it from her, but I don't have any more than that. So it's just latitude and longitude. That's the format in which the data was downloaded. And we're going to say, give us a face color. I defined a two-line function at the top of this notebook, if you're interested, that gives a random hex color value. Not relevant. Just picks a random color for every one. And then we're going to set the edge color between our polygons to be black. I'm not going to render this plot because it takes about a minute to produce. But there it is. That's what it looks like. This is every polygon in the state's shapefile colored randomly with a black edge on a map in the web Mercator projection. And that's it. Questions about that? None. Moving on. 
There's another way to do this. Less control, but fewer lines of code. Cardopy has a module called Feature. Feature is a more generalized version of what we just did, and uh, basically the, of the Shape Reader module. And Feature says, go get me a natural earth feature with the following details. Give them colors the way in which I've described here. And we're going to do the same thing. You'll notice this is a theme. We're going to set up our figure, 15 by 15 matplotlib figure. We're going to add a set of axes to it with our default projection, which is the web mercator projection. We're going to set the extent, which is exactly identical to what we did above in the geodetic coordinate system, WGS84 datum. We're going to set the title. And we're going to add the feature. So this is just one line. This time you don't need any fancy for loops. You don't need to read the shape file. You don't need to go download it. There it is. All the work has been done for you. You just want borders on your map, and there are your borders on your map. Quite simple. It's nice to be able to do this in as few lines of code as we're doing it here. This is very convenient. Um, CardoPy's feature module has some of these built in and pre-downloaded for you. If you are someone who needs very specific information on your base map, these aren't going to work well for you. But if you just want to put some very vague global landmarks on your projected maps, dot rivers and dot borders are pretty useful. This is our map. I colored the borders green so you can see what it was added to. Right, and you guys can be running these cells if you want. The reason why I'm not doing that is because these plots take a long time to render. If those of you who are running them are observing that, that's normal. There's a lot of data in here. OK, so that's basically the very short version of how to add features to your base map plot or your base, yeah, your base map plot lib plots, OK, with Cardopy. But what we haven't actually talked about very much yet is the actual act of projecting data, right? Because that's why we're standing here today is why is to learn about how Cardopy can manage our projections for us. And that's what we're going to do next. And so to give you basically the, the, um, the, the high level overview of what we're going to do, or what Carter Pi is expecting from us is the following. So I told you earlier that when you make a set of axes in a matplotlib figure, you always, 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 if you're using CardoPy, have to tell the plt.axes function what projection you're intending your final plot to be plotted in. Okay, so that's a, that's a, like a non-negotiable. You must do that because it, that is what you're trying to do in the first place. You're trying to make a plot in a given projection. But the additional thing that's very important to note, and we're gonna gonna show you some examples of this later, is that every time you plot something on the map, or you specify something to the axis object, it needs to know the source coordinate reference system that the data to be plotted is in. Okay, and this is the strength of CardoPy. Because let's say you're an oceanographer or a meteorologist or something, and your community uses like the Lambert conformal projection or the stereographic projection or the orthographic projection. And when you go to download your data from NOAA or NASA or whatever, your data is already in that projection. The beauty of CardoPy is that all you have to do is download your data, put it in some Python object, and when you add that object to your plot by saying plt.addgeometries or something like that, axis.addgeometries, all you need to say is, hey, by the way, the data is in the orthographic projection. CardoPy says, okay, well, you want a map in the stereographic projection, your data is in orthographic, so I'm just going to do that transformation for you. Don't worry about it. That's the strength of CardoPy. You don't have to think about the transformations if you don't want to. I'm giving you the very simple version of this, but Cardopy is an actually extraordinarily full-featured and very powerful library where you can specify almost every projectable parameter that these projections have. So I'm using all defaults here, but if you want to give very specific projected parameters to both the default, to both the projected space and the source data space, you can do that. It's possible. But again, we're using defaults. Okay, so here we go. CardoPy comes built in with a whole bunch of really useful global map projections, which are useful for a lot of different contexts and have been accepted by the cartographic community as being very valuable for large classes of plotting problems. Um, so what we're going to do here is, oh, this is a mistake. Nice, first mistake, great. Um, we're just going to plot, I said lambda is a equal area, but that's not what this plot is, so that's a mistake. This is, again, our web mercator plot again. But what I've added to this web mercator plot is this line, or this line here in the code, cell 9. 
This is called Tissot's Indicatrix. These are circles plotted on the map. And the idea of these circles very generally is to just demonstrate to you how the um, distortion works of the map projection. Okay, so all of these circles have uh, equal radius in kilometers. Okay, so you can see them being plotted and they're all different, which gives you an idea of how the distortion of your chosen map projection works. And this is just another reason why we should understand projections and hopefully Sarah's gonna enlighten us on this because the, the trade-offs you make when you choose one are particularly relevant to the way people interpret your data, right? You might think that, you know, I mean, there's the classic, like, is Alaska really that big question? You know, that's like, you know, can you, look at an, can you look at a web mercator plot and have a good sense of area? Not really. If area is important to you, maybe this isn't the projection for you. And you can see that in the shapes of these circles. So in, for the rest of the projections I'm going to show you, they all have Tissot's indicatrix on them. And they also have grid lines. I've added the grid lines just with the axe.grid lines feature uh, function here above. Everything else is exactly the same. And so you can see the grid lines become further apart. Randy was talking about this. The longitude lines separate, whereas the latitude lines stay, well, or rather, yeah, the latitude lines stay uh, closer together. Okay, here's our Lambert as Muthel equal area plot. Now I want you to look at the code here. What's different? What line is different? Call it out. The second one, what's different about it? I changed the destination projection. That's all I did. That's all I did. The rest of the code is identical. So I've now specified that I want to use a different destination projection, but the rest of the, the coordinates that I've given, in this case only an extent, and only the state's feature, all of these things are being plotted. Now think about the complexity of what Cartopi is doing here. It's getting all of these features, which are in a latitude and longitude projection. It knows that because it's built into the feature object. It knows that the source projection you want is the Lambert as Muthel equal area projection. And it's under the hood doing the transformation you need to do for you and making your map. I think this is very powerful. Go to the next one. The Albers equal area projection, also built in. Here we are just changing the second line. I'm just hammering this home to show you just how simple this is. Right? If you need to change your projection to see how it, it might look, this is very simple to do. Lambert conformal, similar. This is, a, this is a plot we see a lot in meteorology, that projection. Okay, but let's say that you work only in Mount Rainier National Park. And you know that there's a, there's a standard projection for Mount Rainier National Park. And that's the one that everybody uses. You're going to have what's called an EPSG number for that projection. EPSG stands for the European, what, the European so Petroleum Survey Group, who has designated themselves as the authority on projections. And they have assigned a number to all of them. And CardoPi gives us a tool ccrs.epsg, it's a function where we take an EPSG number, which defines a projection. This function will go ask epsg.io, which is a website, for the parameters of that given projection you've specified, and then we'll download those parameters and use them as your source projection. The only thing I've done here is I've taken the Washington North projection, which is EPSG 2926. I've added a dot with Seattle on it, it's just the word Seattle on the map. I've added the states feature, same as before. Grid lines, the Tissot indicatrix, and then I've done this for both Washington North, Washington South, and the Mercator projection. If you guys look down here, this is the extent of the Washington North projection, and this is the extent of the Washington South projection. The state of Washington has two projections that cover the entire state. Okay. You can see that it's different from the web mercator by looking at the indicatrices, the circles. On the web mercator, they're evenly spaced and on a grid. But in the individual state projections, there's a little bit of curvature between them. Another example of why one might choose one projection over another. Again, it depends on your use case, but I'm just demonstrating that they're different. And so finally, Real quickly, I want to show you that this is way more powerful than it might even seem because you can actually plot real data really easily on these maps. Now, I don't want to go through all the details of these individually, but really quickly, what we're doing here is we are grabbing some data, uh, some shape files from the, um, from the National Park Service of all the park boundaries. 
They're wrong, by the way. This is the wrong data set. I downloaded the wrong one, but we're just going to roll with it. There's some errors. Forget about it. We're using GeoPandas. And we're reading in the shapefile. Here, because, it's a, because shapefiles are um, actually a set of files, you can put them in a directory and then just give the directory name. So that's what I've done here. I'm reading in the uh, shapefile directory into a GeoPandas object. I'm saying, OK, there are 58 parks in the file. Great. Sounds about right. Um, we're making a new plot object, same as before, 15 by 15 matplotlib object. We're adding to it axes in the web mercator projection. Here's our extent, same as before. Adding the states feature, same one we did before. I took the line width a little bit down so they wouldn't be so oppressive in our plot. And then I said, add some rivers, why not? I had to buffer the... Um, I had to buffer the edges of these uh, of these sh of these polygons because they wouldn't plot otherwise. I don't know why. Not sure why. Can't tell you the answer to that, but I had to do it. And importantly, this is the key right here, guys. CRS equals. This is how you tell CardoPy in the Add Geometries line, hey, my data is in the plate car projection. It is latitude and longitude data, and a WGS84 datum, latitude and longitude coordinates. That means that it knows how to plot it now. If you don't give the CRS parameter, it won't plot the data. It'll just say, great, I know about it, but I'm not going to put it on your map because I don't know how. I don't know how to project from an unknown space to the one you want. Yeah? Um, I'm curious why you switched to GeoCanvas to read the shape file as opposed to the Cardo Pi. Yeah, that's a great question. Only because it is fewer lines of code. That's the only reason. And it's, it's more native to me. But you could have done it in the shape reader module of Cardo Pi. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah. This is, I think, is a, is a closer use case to what you might actually do in real life, because it's likely that you're going to be doing some processing or analysis on your data and then plotting it. And if you're using GeoPandas for that, this is how you would do it. Get the geometry column from the park's geo data frame, buffer the, um, the polygons by zero. Again, I don't know. It's very confusing to me why that's necessary. Most data, you won't have to do that, but I think it was just some error. I think what it was is there were invalid polygons in this data set. They didn't, make, they didn't meet each other. So if you buffer it by zero, it'll solve that problem automatically. It'll just make guesses and it'll draw lines. This is probably why some of these polygons are wrong. Okay. And there we are. There's the National Parks of the United States on a, on a uh, web mercator plot. You can see there's a giant chunk missing out of Denali. And I don't know why. Okay, so we're working with what we got here. Um, but let's say you wanted to look at um, northern Washington's parks. Well, hey, all you need to do is say, OK, well, my map projection is the Washington North projection, EPSG 2926. I'm setting my destination projection in my plot as that. And oh, look, there's the northern part of Washington with its national parks on it. Let's say we wanted to look at Alaska, the Alaska Albers projection. All we need to do is change the third line. There's Alaska. Yes, projections have extents. The projections that are built into CardoPy for the most part are global. However, most projections are not global. So you can your projections are they have an extent. Okay, because certain assumptions can be made on smaller regions of the surface of the planet than on others. Okay, and that's that's all you need to know about CardoPy. Questions? Yeah. You just said that the projections are built into CardoPy are totally global. Yeah. Um, does it have a subset of uh, a specific hardware projection built in that it can handle? Or does it handle the full breadth of uh, um, EPSG projections? Yeah. So CardoPy has sort of three layers of what's available to you. There are the built in ones that are totally just baked into the code. Then there's the ability to search by EPSG number. Yeah. And then there's the ability to write your own projection in the Proj4 projection specification standard. And so that's sort of the most advanced usage. But if you have your own projection for your own region of the planet that you've made and you think it's awesome, you can add it to CardoPy and it will plot your, it will plot your projection. Yeah. Other questions before we transition again? Yeah? Nice. Uh-huh. Great. I will help you with that. I don't know why. Okay. Other questions about CardoPy? Yeah. Uh, 
Sure. Yeah. So the, what I was showing here is that you just give all the data and it'll subset it for you. But you could also subset the data first. You could also set the extent of a different projection to just show Alaska. Like let's say you wanted to show Alaska, but you wanted to do it on the web Mercator projection. You would just specify the extent of the plot that you want, and it would just show you Alaska. The point here was all I did was add the Alaska Albers projection, and it knew where the boundaries of that projection were, and it knew how to perform the cartographic transformation, and then that's what you got fairly effortlessly. <laughs> 